This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome after a very long time for the class. So in today's class, we'll be covering menopause, a nice guideline, and uh, POI guideline ASHRAE, and related talks. Okay, so first I'll be uh, and this, uh, like explaining all the things. After that, you, in between, there would be the questions also for the practice. And uh, if anything is not clear, you can just stop me so that I can explain again. Okay. So coming to the few definitions. So menopause is what? That is the last menstrual period. And what is perimenopause? Perimenopause is, is a stage that is just before menopause. And how we make the diagnosis on the basis of the, our symptoms, the patient have got vasomotor symptoms, usually night flashes, hot flash. So night sweats and hot flashes and periods, they become irregular. So many times, you know, they gave a question and that they just want to listen that the patient is having perimenopause. And what is a postmenopause? Postmenopause is a time when there had been complete cessation of period for 12 months. So like clear definition of the terms is very important uh, because these terms are usually, uh, we use in, uh, interchangeably. But menopause is a last menstrual period. Perimenopause is a period or a stage before complete stoppage of the period when the symptoms are there. And the postmenopause is a period when there had been complete cessation of period for 12 months. Okay. So th these are different definitions. Then if the patient is like hysterectomy has been done. So the menopause, then it will be on the basis of symptoms only. Another thing, a good definition that is very important. That is the POI, premature ovarian insufficiency. Use of right terminology is very important because previously people used to say POF, but now it is POI. That is a period that uh, when the menopause occurs, less than age for, uh, of 40. So the, these are the few, you know, definitions for the clear knowledge. After that, like, what is the average age of menopause usually it is 51 but in one of the talk they wrote 51.4 years this is the natural age and uh, usually like uh, if the fam why uh, the early menopause can occur so it it could be one of the most important factors is the hereditary that it, that is present in 30 to 70 percent of the cases second it is association with the type 1 diabetes mellitus another association is smoking so if the question asks you about the modifiable risk factor to click for the early menopause so answer will come obviously smoking now how to diagnose now this this is very uh, people make mistake here both in you know part two and part three so if the patient uh, uh, is there and the age of the patient is more than 45 then no further test is required only on the basis of symptoms diagnosis of menopause is done okay now if the patient has got uh, uh, like menopausal symptoms and the patient's age is more than 40 but less than 45 then at least one fsh test will be done to diagnose that the patient is having menopause so one test is done and if the patient is less than 40 years of age then there are two tests are done um, fsh use we, we do fsh and two tests are done that is a four weeks apart okay so the uh, knowing of age is very important because here the question come in both exams two and three so i'm repeating it again if the patient is more than age 40 no test diagnosis on the basis of symptom the patient age is in between 40 to 45 one test of fsh along with the symptom is required for the diagnosis if the patient age is less than 40 you know already the patient is uh, you are dealing with a patient of poi so two fsh uh, two uh, test of uh, follicular stimulating hormone four weeks apart would be required for the diagnosis. This is very important that you should have a clear idea. 
then only FSH is used for the diagnosis. No MH, uh, AMH, inhibin A, B, estradiol, uh, AFC, ovarian volume. These are the tests. They are not used for the diagnosis of perimenopause and menopause. Be very careful about it. Okay. Apart from this, like uh, if the FSH, if the patient is on uh, combined estrogen progesterone, contraception or high dose progesterone, that time even FSH will not be effective to use. Okay. Because the excess is already suppressed. So you won't be getting the correct result out of it. Now, what are the symptoms of the menopause? So, vasometer symptoms. So, water, water, water symptoms will be hot flashes and night sweats, musculoskeletal symptoms. This will be joint and muscle pain. Apart from this effect on mood, usually the patients have low mood, urogenital symptoms, vaginal dryness and urinary increased tendency for urinary complaints and urinary tract infection, and sexual difficulties, low sexual desire. So, the symptoms of the menopause can be divided, you know, into three parts, early and medium and long-term symptoms. What will be the early symptom? So early symptoms, like it would be a cessation of periods. Second, it would be hot flashes and night sweats. Usually it affects, these are the vasomotor symptoms and this affects 80, 70 to 80% of the people. Okay, so this percentage is important. Sometimes, you know, question may be asked. And what is the duration? If the median duration is usually it's settled down in, in the first five to seven uh, years of the period. But for few, like maybe few percentage of the women, it may last for longer also and maybe very troublesome for some women. Then vasomotor symptom, uh, you, okay, um, usually as I already told, that these are self-limited and uh, they become gradually less and less intense and usually after five to seven years, they settle down. Apart from this, uh, what could be the early symptoms? Mood swings, panic attacks, depression, forgetfulness, reduced uh, fluency, and difficulty in concentrating headaches. So these are the early symptoms of menopause. Then what will be the medium symptoms? Medium term symptom. So medium term symptoms, usually they occur in between five, within five to 10 years of menopause. So what could be those? Vaginal dryness and dyspareunia. Decreased libido. A reason is very obvious because of the dyspareunia. And also there uh, started occurs androgen uh, deficiency. Apart from this, there could be uh, uh, vaginal pH. It rises. So that causes endo, uh, like bacteria, enterobacterial growth and contributor for recurrent urinary tract infections. So apart from this, there could be because of the atrophy, estrogen has gone from the body. So atrophic urethritis, diminished urethral mucosal seal, loss of compliance, irritation, predisposed. So all these factors usually further causes worsening of the urinary incontinence also. There could be some skin changes that occurs. These also comes in the medium term symptoms. There will be thinning of skin, hair loss, brittle nails, generalized pains, aches associated because the estrogens are going from the body, estrogen ups, uh, not there in the body. Apart from this, the androgen levels are also going. Now, what could be the long-term implications? Long-term implication, uh, these are the fragility fractures, signifies the stress of estrogen uh, deficiency long-term. Apart from this, effect increase in the cardiovascular disease and the degenerative arthropathy. Usually, we offer a treatment for the menopause that usually helps the woman in tackling with the early and medium uh, term symptom uh, for the menopause. Usually long term uh, implication will still remain only. Then whenever we have to offer the patient, uh, you know, HRT. So before we give HRT, there's, there should be certain safety checks. Though it is more important for the part three people that, that when the HRT station comes, they have to do certain checklist, but it is important for the, you know, part two and EBCOG also like uh, first when the patient comes uh, assessment of the menopausal symptoms in state, 
like a patient you are dealing with a patient of perimenopause postmenopause and uh, what is a bleeding pattern because what type of hrt you will give that usually depends upon the state of menopause okay that will be discussing in uh, just uh, like upcoming slides now whether the patient requires contraception or not so it is also very important because you will get question in both part 2 3 apcog exams if you are patient you are offering hrt and the patient is less than 50 then yes you have to offer contraception for two more years because hrt where carries hormone estrogen progesterone that will not do the suppression of excess so it is not contra it will not have any contraceptive effect at all so the if the if you find in your question the patient is less than 40 50 years of age please give 2 years of uh, con uh, contraception but if it, your patient in the question is more than 50 then only 1 year of contraception is required okay so this part is also important now before we offer hrt it is very important that uh, uh, contraindications to be checked so uh, like uh, the uh, if patient has hormone dependent malignancy endometrial or uh, breast cancer any embolism recent and uh, any patient has embolism on a long term uh, anticoagulation any possibility of active liver renal or kidney disease and uh, investigated abnormal bleeding acute intermittent porphyria though this is very remote then we are not asking that but above all indication contra indications we have to check before we offer contra uh, hrt apart from this family history is very important ask about cardiovascular condition osteoporosis with dvt and hormone related cancers then risk factor for chd or the coronary heart disease has to be checked patient has diabetes hypertension family history of mi cig uh, lifestyle like cigarette smoking sedentary lifestyle um, this is very important and like a checklist for the osteoporosis osteoporosis is also very important whether they have got previous history any previous history of fragility fractures are there okay so these are the few checklist it is very important you do before you do uh, you know assessment for hrt now coming to the examination according to the like uh, this uh, uh, uk or nhs before they take full history and check for checklist for the contraindication after that only they are checking two things that is bmi and blood pressure so it is also very important whenever the like student they do uh, like uh, ask a question in the part 3 they give a lot of list but it is only bmi and blood pressure that has to be checked before starting a chart usually breast examination and pelvic examination is also not required it is only carried out if like indicated by history that yeah examination to be done otherwise they are not doing any examination only also bmi and blood pressure two things are the main that they are checking before they offer a chart now coming to like the same thing i already said no investigations are routinely indicated before starting a chart uh, few few exceptions if you if the, your patient is less than 40 years of age yes you will do fsh if your patient is like uh, gives personal family history of dvt thrombophilia thrombophilia screening has to be done if the patient is giving you history of irregular bleeding you will do endometrial assessment and if the patient has got any risk factor for the breast cancer to know whether she is already having any breast cancer or lump you will do mammography so these are the frequent uh, uh, frequent situations where usually uh, the, in, these are the investigation required otherwise from your history or the checklist not getting anything then only uh, click uh, rcog wants to be checked blood pressure and bmi only now coming to the symptoms so there could be a couple of options so it could be hormonal it could be non hormonal or it could be like uh, just lifestyle cognitive behavior therapy now for the vasomotor symptoms 
so the vasomotor symptoms the usually vasomotor symptoms are the more troublesome hot flushes and night sweats so hrt can be offered so uh, now what what type of hrt to be given if the women have got uterus then hrt that means estrogen and the progesterone both but if hysterectomy has been done then you will give ERT or the estrogen replacement therapy. Apart from this, these are the hormonal options. Non-hormonal options for the vasomotor symptoms, it could be SSRI, SNRI, and clonidine. Okay, and uh, so they can be offered. If the patient, usually you will find the questions where patient has got some contraindication for, you know, hormones, then you will uh, opt for the non-hormonal options. Isoflavins and black cosh usually really vasomotor symptoms. Some evidence is there, but few things are there. Safety data is not there. And the, there are varying uh, preparations are available in the market. So like how much is the content that uh, like uh, that um, checks are not there. And apart from this, some interactions with the medications because some of them interact with the enzymes of the metabolism are also there. So these are the few things you should know about the isoflavins and black kosh. Apart from this, for the psychological symptoms, now if the patient, like uh, uh, what they say, if the HRT is given, they also uh, take care, uh, alleviate the low mood. If the low mood is arising as a result of hormonal change of menopause, before that, even consideration for CBT or the cognitive behavior therapy can be there. But if the uh, if uh, SSRI or SNRI are not given, if the low mood is because of uh, menopause only, these are the treatment for depression. If the menopausal woman is coming uh, with the symptoms of depression, then only SSRI or SNRI to be given. If the low mood is there, because of the hormonal changes of menopause usually uh, like antidepressants are not given that time the treatment would be correction of the hormone that is hrt or counseling that is cbt altered sexual function many times you will find this question low sex desire if hrt is not useful then consideration for testosterone this is very common question that is asked Now coming to the urogenital atrophy, so uh, like uh, usually if atrophic changes are there, uh, the first line of treatment will be going for vaginal estrogen or the local estrogen. But if the lo local estrogens are not relieving any symptoms, then consideration for a uh, like uh, the charty can be uh, oral treatment can be done. Patient to be explained that these are like. Uh, uh, symptomatic treatments so once they stop treatment the symptom will come back any adverse effect local estrogen is very rare but if they have any vaginal bleed unscheduled or any problem they have to report to gp uh, that patient to be told about that and moisturizers and lubricant can also be used for atrophic changes now there are certain complementary and unregulated uh, uh, therapies are there like uh, in form of the unregulated compound, bioidentical hormones, complementary therapy. Send, for example, this black kosh and St. John Watt. So in John Watt, people are taking uh, many questions. You will find also this. And this is also uh, act as enzyme inducer. So there is some evidence that it is effective in the relief of vasomotor symptoms. But there is a, uh, these are the unregulated preparations. So... Uh, there is uncertainty about the effect, their doses, and the variation is there in the potency of the preparations. And apart from this, the, the, uh, these medications, as I already told, they it, it acts as an enzyme inducer. So there could be like interactions with the medication the pa patients are already on, uh, tamoxifen, uh, anticoagulants or anticonvulsants. So it acts as an enzyme inducer. So uh, whenever you are offering this as a treatment it is very important to take clear history from the patient that patient is not taking any other medication that can interact because the interaction is also very common now uh, when the patient is on hrt and there could be some irregular bleeding so according to the this is uh, what we i have started with the nice guideline only 
so according to the nice guideline the patient should be called after th uh, at three month review at the three month like uh, within three month they're not uh, like uh, treatment is not required because it, they say it is a common side effect that settled down but if the patient has got any trouble after first three months then yes it has to be investigated and accordingly the treatment or change of the treatment has to be done so but there had been a talk also and there has been discrepancy in the like well, a nice guideline in the talk so i'll be when i'll be discussing that talk i'll be speaking about that the talk says the patient to be uh, to be seen or investigated after six months of the treatment and uh, nice guideline says that if the patient has any uh, like unscheduled vaginal bleeding then patient has to be reviewed after or investigated after three months so there is a discrepancy in between the nice guideline and the talk both but coming to the answers in my opinion we have to follow nice guideline now how how long the patient has to be taken uh, to be taken hrt hrt usually to be given for the short term time till the patient has got like uh, a symptomatic treatment is there and uh, uh, like it has to be reduced gradually because uh, uh, or immediate um, if it is reduced uh, gradually or immediately then there will be some change in the symptoms or symptoms will come back that will be like short term symptoms but in long term symptoms there usually there is no effect now few things it is very important so uh, very important that uh, menopause in the breast cancer so if the patient has breast is a, a history of breast cancer hrt is absolutely contraindicated okay so this is very important to remember apart from this uh, if the uh, you will find the question that the patient has breast cancer and the patient has got uh, like vasomotor symptoms then usually what will be hormones cannot be given so what will be the treatment treatment will be either paroxetine or fluoxetine uh, or like uh, snri or clonidine but if your patient is taking tamoxifen then uh, even paroxetine and fluoxetine cannot be given because there is a interaction so be very careful so if the, um, breast cancer is an absolute contraindication for um, if the patient has breast cancer and if the patient so uh, for the vasomotor symptoms that treatment that can be given it could be non hormonal but if your patient is on tamoxifen then even paroxetine and fluoxetine cannot be given so be very careful about it when you answer your question apart from this if the patient has got breast cancer any isoflavin red clover black kosh and uh, like uh, magnetic devices all these things also according to the nice guidelines are not offered in the patient having breast cancer all this like uh, uh, soya clover red clover and uh, black kosh usually they interact with the estrogen and also therefore it is not given in the breast cancer but uh, such association about vitamin e is not unknown but the uh, nice guideline says no to everything like uh, if the woman is having menopausal symptoms with the breast cancer so be very careful if the station comes in your exam or if it is part 2 questions now what could be the long term risk of hormone replacement therapy so vt could be there vt is increased by the oral hrt okay so risk so, but if it is given transdermal then usually the risk is like the general uh, it, it, it is not increased it is just like the baseline population risk so if the patient has got uh, like the risk of hrt or if the patient has got bmi of more than 30 consider transdermal option rather than oral so whenever you do your question and you see the patient say, look at the in your question about the bmi if you are in the question in the bmi in uh, bmi in your question is more than 30 then consideration for transdermal a chart to be should be done look for the option of a transdermal rather than oral 
okay so this is important point that to be noted apart from this sometime uh menopause woman is coming and has a high risk of uh, vt for example family history is there or hereditary thrombophilia is there then usually the, these patients uh, instead of offering hrt refer to the hematologist so you will find this in the option also that uh, like uh, this kind of scenario answer will be referred to the hematologist okay so remember this now oral estrogen usually increases um, vt because it, because of its first past effect on liver synthesis of like all all issues that can happen it affects but the progesterone also contribute not the micronized progesterone usually when the hormones are started there is increased risk that increased risk occur in first on two years of the use after that it drops down and there is no increase in hrt with the non oral preparations so these are the few things that you, you have to like remember about this so cardiovascular disease usually if the if the hrt is uh, if the hrt is given and the woman is less than 60 years of age so cardiovascular risk is not increased and also it doesn't if, uh, increase the risk of you know uh, increase risk of dying also cardiovascular factors are not a contraindication for hrt unless it is optimally managed so hrt with the estrogen and progesterone if it is given it is associated with little or no increase of chd or the coronary heart disease basically it happens with the oral estrogen the small risk of stroke can happen but if it, if the clay like, patient has got a cardiovascular risk factor and if the option of transdermal is there then that would be a better option okay now uh, coming to the side effect when the patient is taking hrt if it is uh, hrt with the estrogen alone associated with little or no change in the um, increase of breast cancer but hrt if it is taken with both estrogen and progesterone then it is associated with increased risk of breast cancer okay so just remember it if it is taken with the estrogen then very small or little or no change in the risk of breast cancer but both estrogen and progesterone associated with the increased risk of breast cancer apart from this it is related as a side effect but it is related to the treatment of duration and also it reduces after stopping hrt so if the patient at like risk is increased so it add, as it is related to duration so once it is stopped so the increased risk will come back to normal now these are the few things also you should know so there could be sequential uh, hrt in sequential hrt use uh, estrogen and given and also like uh, estrogen given daily and the progesterone is given for last 10 to 14 days so this will be the, uh, in this type of hrt patient will be having periods as regular apart from this continuous combined hrt continuous combined hrt or cct it is usually given uh, estrogen and progesterone continuously and in this type of hrt there would be no bleeding there would be no bleeding apart from the third thing that you have to remember is the tibilon tibilon is a synthetic steroid like man made steroid that has got estrogen androgen and progesterone activity a continuous combined hrt and tibilon these kind of hrt are given usually when the patient is post menopausal that means that means complete cessation of period for 12 months so if uh, so you have to review your question if the patient have got stop period for 12 months then you will offer her a um, continuous combined hrt or tibilon 
but if your patient is having still periods then the option would be given will be sequential or um, cyclical hrt now tibilone few things i want to tell about the tibilone so it is used in the menopause hormone therapy it uh, has got if uh, it is a treatment of like it helps with the bone so postmenopausal osteoporosis now sometime you will find a question the patient has endometriosis and everything has been removed what will be the options usually small uh, in spite of surgery some spots could be there so only estrogen will not be the option like it causes flare up either you will give in answer estrogen progesterone combined therapy even after the the surgery has been and the uterus is not there then also we give estrogen and progesterone or second choice would be tibilon now tibilon is a synthetic steroid that has got estrogenic progesterogenic and androgenic activity so it act it is an agonist for estrogen progesterone and androgen receptors because it has got like androgenic activity so sometime you will find a question that prop woman is having problem with the libido then you look for the tibilon in the answer you will find it side effect are also there for the tibilon uh, like uh, much of them is the acne increased hair growth but it sometime it may causes like it do have effect on endometrium and also very small risk of even uh, embolism is also so a few thing this uh, uh, tibilon this much minimum knowledge about tibilon is necessary and tibilon can only be given when the patient has no periods for 12 months so this part is very important to be remembered though it is not necessary for your exam but it is available as a name of live uh, live live a part okay so when the hrt is given there could be some estrogen related effect so it could be usually like uh, uh, the, uh leg cramps that improve with the lifestyle changes exercise and stretching there could be gastric problems that usually help by taking it with the for or switching the preparations headaches if the side effects are persistent then either dose of estrogen is reduced type is reduced or mode of delivery is reduced because the hrt is available in a lot a lot number of forms okay and progesterone related side effects of hrt it could be fluid retention breast tenderness headaches migraines mood swings depression angry if persistent side effects are there again reduce the dose change the type change the route or switch the patient on the cct there is a continuous combined therapy where small dose is given whole period okay till this till that covered is the nice guideline for menopause and also few points from the strategy till now any one of you have got any question or i move to poi ashray any question till now anyone has got any question i think no question okay coming to ashray so now poi also becomes very important because uh it is it is the european guideline ashray guideline so very important for the apcog exam but even for part 2 uh, mrcog also the you know the questions comes an answer will come from poi guideline only recently in part 3 exam the station of poi has come so this becomes very important for the mrcog and apcog both people so first of all what is poi it is Uh, defined as a loss of ovarian activity loss before age of 40 okay it is there could be you know uh, um, like uh, irregular periods or meno amenorrhea oligomenorrhea gonadotropins will be high and estradiol or will be low so what is the prevalence this question may be asked it is 1% and there could be like some modifiable risk fact um, this question also comes with that uh, what could be the modifiable risk factor 
so surgical gynecological practice like whenever we are doing any surgeries on ovaries we have to be very careful using cautery so that less damage to the vascular supply to ovary so gynecological practice modification the lifestyle smoking so that is very important because smoking we all I, uh, we already discussed that the smoking is related to the early menopause so to, to be get taken care of smoking and uh, like uh, some uh, of the like when the treatment is done for the conditions malignant conditions or if they are now gonadotoxic so that uh, like altered regimen has to be there so that they uh, like uh, less damage to ovary so this is very important slide and the questions keeps on coming from here so what is the diagnosis of poi uh, it is oligomenorrhea amenorrhea for at least four months so and elevated um, for fsh level more than 25 international unit on two occasions more than four weeks apart so you have to remember this definition by heart why it is important for your part two exam epoch one exam and also your part three exams because uh, when the, they give you a scenario and if your definition uh, is not clear then you tend up ma uh, making mistakes whether you are dealing with the POI you are dealing with the menopause or you are dealing with the post menopause so correct definition has to be very important so you can make the correct diagnosis otherwise pe I have seen people in the exams they, they they're confused that what type of test to be done and what type of treatment to be offered to the patient so clear knowledge clear concept is very important remember this definition by heart what could be the causes for poi and what could be the test could be done so like uh, if it is non iatrogenic then they then chromosomal analysis can be done uh, usually it is related with the fragile x syndrome so if they have permutation type then less than 200 permutation is there it is linked with the like poi so they want to do this uh, chromosomal analysis because it is familial so the they can take care of the other family members also screening for um, uh, 21 hydrolog hydroxylase antibody is important this question usually comes in of epcoc but it is important to know apart from this uh, like test for um, anti tpo antibodies that is anti thyroid antibodies minimum like uh, clinical diagnosis we do it from the uh, uh, definite symptoms and also from the fsh but to find the etiology behind these are the recommended tests by the uh, guide ashray apart from this uh, not to be done routine screening for diabetes or infection screening because that is not required sometimes you, they will give you a question and there will be a lot of risk factors then you will find that uh, what to answer you will find uh, if you are unable to find any reason for poi so usually you uh, it answer will be unexplained idiopathic because most of the time uh, like uh, you'll be able to find the reason so from this table you will be able to find out the reason but most of the time the reason is not there big scenario is there and answer is unexplained or idiopathic poi that is the most common type now if uh, uh, they have tested antibodies and it has come negative so repeat test is not required unless the patient has symptoms so no further testing is required if once they have come negative now what will be the implications so uh, usually POI on the karyotype if they found Turner so answer will be referred to the endocrinologist cardiologist and geneticist so, uh, if they find Y chromosome material patient has to be discussed with a uh, option of gonadectomy if Rezilex syndrome is there then usually because it is a familial condition referral to geneticist will be the answer and if anti um, uh, like given hydroxylase antibodies they are finding answer will be referred to endocrinologist if they find this is very important and uh, antithyroid antibodies then uh, testing of tsh has to be done the every year why it is important because if the uh, treatment 
um, for the thyroid uh, like hypothyroid condition can be given only um, then if the TSH uh, becomes less it is not given on the basis of presence of the antibody the treatment is only given when the patient has got like variations in the TSH so if the anti TPO antibody is there then TSH has to be done every year or, or on the basis of symptom retesting to be done this question was asked in the in, in the part three also so if the patient of POI is coming so what could be the like fertility option so first option like if uh, there could be spontaneous pro, uh, uh, like uh, pregnancy in five percent of the cases so this is one option that patient get spontaneously pregnant second would be the ovarian uh, egg donation and third will be adoption so three options to be given to the patient in the station of POI if the, she is looking for the fertility and another implication is also there if the patient of POI is there if she is looking for pregnancy then uh, and she wants to have a spontaneous pregnancy then hormone HRT to be given to that woman but if the patient of POI is coming and she says my family is complete I don't want any children then in that con condition she has to use contraception because HRT is not used as a contraception that time she should be discussed about the contraceptive options along with the hormone replacement so these this way on the way uh, answer will change that depends on the wishes of the patient whether she wants pregnancy or whether she doesn't want pregnancy is it clear any question till now no question okay and so the egg donation or oocyte donation is an established option for the woman of fertility with POI so if the woman with the POI is there and she wants to get pregnant with the egg donation it will be real important this full investigation has to be done like uh, the karyotype has to be done uh, because there could be possibility that you are dealing with a patient of Turner if the patient has got like uh, any uh, mediastinal uh, irradiations or patient has got anthracyclines in any kind of chemotherapy or radiotherapy then echo has to be done before a cardiologist referral before she gets pregnant and uh, like uh, before apart from this their blood pressure renal function test is also very important and it the patient with if the pregnancy occurs in a patient who has POI then uh, and uh, it would be like high risk pregnancy so to be taken care in the high risk ops what uh, there could be the risk like this is the usually from the first line I have seen questions uh, like uh, if they are taking egg and the egg donors are sisters then chances of cycle cancellations are high the reason is not specified even in the guideline but usually this comes in the question so you should know apart from this like uh, whenever the down syndrome screening is done so it will be not uh, the age of the like donor will be taken into the account not mother so oocyte donor it will uh, like uh, down syndrome screening or anoplyde screening is done it will be on the basis of the age of the donor so these are the few things that are important usually comes in the exam now what could be the options so first issue will come with the bone protection so avoid smoking calcium estrogen uh, HRT or COC and if the COC is less favorable why COC is less favorable that is very important because in COC uh, the, the usually gonna like uh, the high dose estrogen is there second uh, like uh, coc are stopped after 21 days so pay, there would be seven days period where the patient will have no estrogen and uh, the, uh, so the therefore if it is for the bone protection only a chart is more better or favorable than coc apart from this biphosphonates can also be given but biphosphonates can only given after advice has been taken from the rheumatologist a big, uh, like uh, so in the osteo uh, advice from the osteoporosis specialist or the specialist has to be taken 
so these are the options for the bone protection very important to remember if the questions comes only for bone protection hmrt is more favorable as compared to coc now how the monitoring of health bone health is done in the women of poi so usually at the when the diagnosis is done they usually do bmd and uh, if the bmd is normal then usually the estrogen hrt is given repeat uh, uh, dexa is not required but if they do bmd at the first start and patient is diagnosed with osteoporosis that time like they'll be doing treatment but repeat bmd is done after 5 years so this can only be can come in your question now a uh, chart in a woman with poi so like a chart can be given and there is no increase in the breast cancer till the natural age of menopause so this this is very important to remember like when we read nice guideline we were reading a chart in the post menopausal women that time we learnt that there is a small risk of breast cancer that is related to the duration and the dose of hrt and comes back to normal once the hrt is stopped but it is different in poi women in poi women if the hrt is given till the natural age of menopause there is no increased risk in the breast cancer so this is a little a little different that you should know because this is directly asked in the questions then what is if the hrt has to be given and then what could be the estrogen preparation is preferred it is 17 beta estradiol rather than ethanyl estradiol or um, like conjugated equine estrogen these are the usual preparations we are using in hrt but the better preferred is 17 beta estradiol and progesterone better progesterone will be macronized progesterone so this question also comes in the exam Now, now if the pa- uh, like uh, if the patient has a BRCA mutation, so BRCA mutation, and uh, the patient has gone uh, like uh, 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 prophylactic uh, BSO, then in that situation HRT can be given. So if the patient has BRCA one or two mutation, then in that particular condition, usually like uh, Uh, and they don't have any history of uh, breast cancer then a uh, hrt can be given so this the, the many question comes in the pe- people make mistake and get confused breca station ha- still come in the exam also this time so it is important to remember that there is no problem if the patient has mutation she has gone for risk reduction surgery a hrt can be given till the natural age of menopause with no complication it absolute contraindication is personal history of breast cancer now endometriosis i have already told that if the patient has got like surgery done for endometriosis and you have to offer her a hrt option it is not only estrogen you would either offer estrogen progesterone or tibolol now if the patient has uh, has got migraine usually hrt is not in contraindication but transdermal route is better preferred because it has got lowest risk it is the lowest risk route so even the transdermal um, hrt can be given um, for the migraine sufferer sufferers with aura also so transdermal hrt can be offered now if the patient has a high blood pressure or hypertension that is not contraindication for hrt hrt can be given if the patient has hypertension and she is po has got poi but preferred method will be transdermal hrt rather than oral now this i have already told also if the patient has got history of dvt then usually you, you will find an in your question referral to hematologist that would be the answer hrt more uh, in transdermal route can also be offered to them as well apart from this if in your question you find uh, the patient has fibroid 
not contraindication for HRT can be given. So how the if the patient is on HRT, how you would review? Usually every year for the compliance, specific or routine monitoring tests are not done. Uh, and if the patient has any symptoms or any problem, then only tests are done. Otherwise, only review is done every year. Now, for the sexual dysfunction in the woman of POI, again, it, it will be local estrogen, it could be HRT, or it could be androgen or testosterone. Now, for genitourinary system, uh, if the, like the patient, symptoms in POI, answer would be either local estrogen or HRT or lubricants. Now, neurological symptoms in POI. So if the estrogen replacement is done, that reduces possible risk of cognitive impairment. So uh, at, the, at the age of natural menopause. So uh, like uh, if the woman is postmenopausal, how the uh, HRT will affect on the cognitive functions. Usually that is not uh, like uh, clear, but according to the ASHRAE, if the estrogen replacement is given uh, to uh, like uh, in a woman with POI till the natural age of menopause. So usually it will reduce the risk of cognitive impairment. So that for POI women, it helps. Now, one question I have seen about the puberty induction. So I put this. So how the usually the question I think I saw is uh, how the puberty induction is done with the COC or like uh, with the estradiol. So most of the students, they make mistake and they put COC. But the puberty induction is not done with COC. It is contraindicated. So how puberty induction is done? Puberty induction is usually done in the woman, in the uh, like young girl when they are coming and they have got like, uh, so, like uh, the periods are not started in small uteruses there or uh, like Turner syndrome women. So all these patients where the periods are not started, puberty induction is done. How it is done? It is very important. I have seen question of this also. So usually beta estradiol is given transdermally at uh, like from the age of 12 years and very small doses and these doses are increased for two to three years now uh, like uh, transdermal uh, estradiol is preferred when beta estradiol is preferred because it causes rise in the estrogen in more physiological level as compared to oral tablets now they are usually now, when the progesterone will be added, either there would be two years of estrogen, then progesterone is added for the withdrawal bleeding, number one. Number two, the patient is taking estrogen for a long time and she she's, um, herself start having bleeding. So that time withdrawal uh, progesterone is uh, uh, added. That time progesterone is added. After that cyclical progesterone to be given every month for the clake uh, so that the she can have regular period. So this way the puberty induction is given. I'm repeating it again. Beta estradiol is given gradually increasing doses transdermal route from the age of 12 years. Then say, progesterone is added if the two years of estrogen are done or if the patient herself has breakthrough bleeding. So then the estrogen and progesterone will continue in the form of like HRT, whatever, whole, whole, till the natural age of menopause. So this way, the puberty induction is done. COC is contraindicated for puberty induction. So this part is very important that you, you guys should know. So any question till now? Any question? Ma'am, I had one small question. Hmm. Uh, can yes. you please explain the role of HRT in BPA carriers again? Yes. Okay. So if the patient ha has a, a BRCA carrier, okay, uh, one or two, and they have they had gone 
to risk reduction bso then hrt can be given till the natural age of menopause with no risk is is it clear this is what you were asking yes ma'am but i didn't understand the uh, the rational behind why specifically once the bso has been done if the ovaries are there then why you will give hrt okay okay right so yes yeah so usually when the B, brca1 or brca2 any uh, braca mutation is there so patient uh, the treatment uh, is uh, you know uh, uh, like bso and bso is done at like 35 or 40 years of age so if the patient's ovaries are removed as a risk reduction surgery so they will feel menopausal symptom so they can be given a chart it in the natural age of menopause having a braca mutation is not contraindication for hrt i think now it is clear it's clear thank you okay so the hello yes hello doctor uh, in case of poi if uh, she wants uh, contraceptive so then they uh, it will also act as an hrt uh no i'll tell i'll tell you to uh, i'll tell you again so when the patient of poa is coming if she wants fertility then uh, in that situation usually uh, like uh, uh, 5% spontaneous pregnancy can be there so that time you have to replace hormone and you can give hrt and this hrt never acts as contraceptive so she can get pregnant also Okay. Now, second situation: patient okay. of POI is coming, and her family is complete. She's now patient of 37 years old is coming mm -hmm. to you, and she says uh, she has got symptom of POI, and her family is complete, totally complete. She says I don't want any children. That time, uh, if you have to mm -hmm. give her hormone, you can offer her COC. Why? Because uh, she wants contraception also. She doesn't want pregnancy. So that time contraceptive COC can be given. Is it yes, clear? Yes, I, I am saying the same. Same. I was also say. Thank you, it's okay. clear now. Okay now. Fine. Now you have to give me a question answer. So, uh, so 41 year old woman presented with irregular bleeding, night sweat. Which of the tests to be done to diagnose per perimenopause? 41 year old woman. F. FSH level. Yes. Single FSH test yes, has to be done. Yes, more than twenty-five. Yes, single. Yes. So uh, the patient is forty to forty-five. One FSH test is required. The patient is more than forty-five. Diagnosis is done on the basis of symptoms. No test is required. And patient is less than forty. You already know. Uh, you have to do test according to POI guideline. Now. So, 44-year-old of woman with a history of breast cancer complains of hot flush, and which uh, she is also on tamoxifen. So, which should not be taken as chemotherapy? What if the age is 45? Will do test or not? 45, no. 45 diagnosis of menopause on the basis of symptoms 45 and more okay yes okay so a uh, 44 year old woman has a breast cancer she is coming with a blast a uh, clake uh, uh, hot flushes which of following should not be given as a treatment what is should be the answer yes no no all of the above soya red clover black kosh ssri nothing can be given if the patient is on tamoxifen having breast cancer uh, this is from the ganais guideline only we just read okay all of the above is the answer okay now uh, another similar question 44 year old woman complains of hot flushes and uh, she has a history of breast cancer okay what should be given as a treatment choice Only estrogen. Hmm. Breast cancer is contraindication. Proxy T. 
टमोक्सीफेन then paroxetine also cannot be given because there is a interaction between tamoxifen and paroxetine okay so which of the following statements are uh, uh, regarding pof or poi is true incidence is 1 in 300 90% of cases has autoimmune cause or chromosomal disorders 20% diagnosed resume ovarian activity premature ovarian failure is confirmed when the two tests are repeated 3 to 4 weeks apart and showed raised gonadotropin level risk of hrt before 50 includes breast and ovarian cancer or 3 premature ovarian failure how it can be 3 i just told 5% of the women can get pregnant so here it is saying 20 it is 4 premature poi or can be confirmed by two test fsh done uh, four to six weeks apart and fsh level is more than 25 okay so this is the direct question from the definition only okay premature uh, in uh, premature ovarian insufficiency not at increased risk of atherosclerosis breast cancer cva osteoporosis or vulvovaginitis breast cancer very good breast cancer till the natural age of menopause there is no increase in the breast cancer okay this i have given the answer only which of which of the following is a selective progesterone receptor modulator so answer is ulipristol okay ulipristol is a, a sprm group of medication okay so now um, the 49 year old woman come to you with a clinic she has regular troublesome hot flushes for 6 month she has last period 2 week back so what type of hrd you will give what type of hrd you will give sequential sequential yes. compound hrt yes because she is still having periods so you will give sequential combined hrt now boring question okay which of the following statements are uh, regarding hrt and breast cancer uh, is true this is from strategy question so i put it here so continuous hrt count for three cases of uh, per 10000 per 1000 for two years uh, in in the in between the ages of 50 to 59 continuous combined hrt accounts for five extra cases every 1000 women if they use it for two years continuous combined hrt count for three extra cases every 1000 uh, okay 1000 use of estrogen hrt is associated with high risk compared to combined hrt use of tibulant uh, uh, tibulone is associated with the high highest risk i think i'll tell you the answer already so if the continuous combined hrt is taken uh, then three cases will be more every 1000 women uh, and uh, like uh, if they use it for more than 5 years and the ages in in the ages of 50 to 59 so there had been a study whi and this question is related to that but the question is from strategy so i put this question here okay so it is important to know even even in the part 3 menopause station also they ask how many cases of breast cancer will be extra if they take a hrt so your answer will be this so if the 1000 women take it then there would be only 3 cases extra if they take it for 5 years so this line is important for just to remember for part 3 and part 2 people both okay 
now you can see the options so you can see this is emq not very difficult also so just see what you will answer so 52 year old presented with the hot flashes she takes tablet for hypertension well managed she had hysterectomy when she has 49 years this is question number one so what should be the answer And even what could be the answer? Patient has hot flush. She has hysterectomy. So what you will offer her? Estrogen only. Ma'am, G. Estrogen only yes. oral hormone replacement. Yes. So answer is estrogen only a hormone replacement therapy because uh, uterus is already removed. Okay. Question number two. 48 year old woman present uh, amenorrhea for 10 years, 10 months. Okay, she has family history of osteoporosis. DEXA shows low T score, so she has osteopenia. Her mom aunt have operated for breast cancer. So what should be given? Bisphosphonates. Yes, biphosphonate. So aldernot should be the answer. So first answer is G. That is the uh, like the patient has first in first question patient had hysterectomy and hot flashes. So answer is ERT. That is the estrogen hormone replacement therapy. In second question patient has osteoporosis and she has got risk factor for the hormone also because uh, she uh, it appears that breast cancer is in their family. So answer is a biphosphonate. So answer is aldronate. Good. Okay, 52 years old woman present with low libido, menopause five years back, taking estrogen and progesterone as HRT. So what could be the answer? Testosterone. Yes, so testosterone to be added, okay. 56 year old present in the urogyne clinic with a vaginal irritation, problem for many months, urine and cultures are negative. Local examination shows urethral caruncles. Vaginal estrogen Q. Oh, yes. vaginal estrogen. Vaginal estrogen is the answer. So first question is like uh, um, low libido and she's already on hormone. So you will offer her testosterone hormone therapy. So M is the answer. Second question, patient is dysuria, vaginal irritations, atrophic changes are there. So answer will be local estrogen. Okay, so 50-year-old woman attend gynecology clinic because she won't take HRT, complaining of hot flash, night sweat, infrequent period, USG, uterus, ovary normal. So what type of therapy you will give? Sequential combined. combined. Yes, very good. Sequential combined because she is still having periods. Okay, so uh, now again EMQ, 50 year old woman with GP with a one episode of postmenopausal bleeding lasted for two days. Now stopped. She has got a trophic vagina and cervix. ET is four. She gives history of breast cancer in her first cousin who is 69 years old. So what would be the answer? Local estrogen. So answer is estrogen cream, pastries and vaginal HRT. Okay, so this is the answer. Now 50 year old woman with a severe menopausal symptoms, hot flushes, night sweat, gives to uh, she has THBSO 10 years ago. She is on citalopram, thyroxine, levothyroxine. She is receiving uh, dermatological treatment for psoriasis also. Low 
clonidine. So, why you want to give her clonidine? Hot flashes, side sweats, and severe. She can be given what? Oral estrogen? Oral estrogen. Hystrectomy is already there. Okay. H. Patient has not used. Hystrectomy is done. So she is having a symptom. So what you will give? ERT, estrogen only therapy. You can't give transdermal hair because she has got dermatological treatment for psoriasis. Okay. So transdermal option will not come here. Here it, it will come oral only. Therefore, here it will come oral only. So, 50-year-old woman, hot flashes, night sweats, irregular period for 8 months, FSH is 45, very religious, want to have regular menstrual period, happy to take tablets. Wants to have period or not have she is very religious, wishes to have regular menstrual periods every month. Mm -hmm. Sequential RHRT. Sequential, sequential estrogen progesterone. Yes. So, and sequential estrogen progesterone is an answer. Okay, 50 year old uh, uh, woman, severe menopausal symptoms, gives history of menorrhagia and myomectomy five years back. Cervical screen is negative, does not want cyclical vaginal bleed. Continuous combined. Yes, it will be CCT only, continuous combined estrogen and uh, progesterone hormone replacement therapy. So, answer is A. 50 year old woman with a menopausal symptom. Uh, she had vaginal hysterectomy for prolapse. She is epileptic, taking 600 mg of carbamazepin daily, twice a day. Yes. So it will be, she has got hysterectomy done. So you will give her estrogen replacement therapy. And estrogen yes. replacement therapy will be transdermal. So answer is J. Okay, I already put the answer. So uh, like 36-year-old uh, woman goes for abdominal hysterectomy, bilateral selfing of rectomy for painful adhesal masses. She comes a clinic six weeks later, histology benign. Complaints of hot flushes, what is the most uh, appropriate choice? So, here the patient has abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral self finger So, uh, so estrogen replacement. Estrogen, estrogen replacement. Yes, so B, uh, conjugated uh, equine estradiol. So, uh, ERT or estrogen replacement therapy is the answer. 50 year second question 15 year old woman with a severe worsen motor symptoms lack of concentration irritability periods are regular was on evaluation for pre perimenopause bleeding six months ago results found to be completely normal what is the like uh, appropriate choice so answer is a sequential or cyclical estrogen progesterone because she is still having periods and on investigation she is fine so answer to question number two is k that is like um, cyclical estrogen and progesterone. Ma'am, in the first question, can it be endometriomas, the complex adnexal masses which are painful? They have not specified it. They have not specified it that what are the painful masses. If in the question they specify, now okay. see the histology, histology is, was reported to be benign. So, oh. if they mention in the question, if they mention anything about endometriosis, then your answer will come estrogen progesterone. But they have not mentioned it anywhere. Okay. Hmm? Okay. So, again, as a 55 year old woman with a dyspronia and nocturia, 
मिड स्ट्रीम कल्चर इज नेगेटिव वल्वा वजाइना ड्राई वल्वल बायोप्सी शोज नो अबनॉर्मेलिटीज वॉट इज अ चॉइस so any time if you see in your question dry atrophy answer will be local estrogen so d is the answer question number 4 like a uh, uh, 60 year old woman with vulval soreness vulva and vagina dry and out Histo histology shows hyperkeratosis and fibrosis in dermis she is medically fit what is the most appropriate treatment though it is not from hrt but you nobita sir Clobitasol because Clobitasol. she is having like hyperkeratosis uh, is like uh, in a stratum corineum. This is a key word for lichen sclerosis. So uh, answer to question number three is D. That is a local estrogen because she is having dry all atrophy. Answer to question number four. She is having hyperkeratosis, lichen sclerosis. So uh, like clobitasol is the answer. Okay, so 39 year old woman diagnosed with premature ovarian failure have presented with the symptoms of amenorrhea, flush, night flushes, or night sweats, and loss of libido. So, what should be the answer? Clonidine. She is having POF, premature ovarian failure. So, uh, HRT. HRT. so e or oral hrt combined combined she would be given combined hrt that is the answer okay 51 year old woman with low intermittent anxiety not on any medication otherwise well she has attained menopause 6 month back what could be the answer related to the uh, menopause doesn't appear like that because there is no previous history they are giving she is not any medication she is well only combined hrt ma'am loxetine loxetine no no uh, unless the uh, this i already told unless it clearly specify that she the patient is having symptoms of like uh, uh, depression Antidepressants are not given. So, if the low mood is because of yes, if the low mood is because like she attended six month back with a low mood. So, if it is because low mood because of menopause, so first will be CBT, second will be HRT. Okay, first will be CBT, then it will be HRT. So, the 49 year old woman has he struck me four year back present with the vasomotor symptoms. low mood night sweats lack of interest in sex what should be given hrt combined why hrt uh, her uterus yes Sorry. estrogen replacement well, because her uterus is already been removed so it will be ert okay estrogen replacement therapy Okay, so the patient is on tamoxifen for breast cancer. Presented with menopausal symptoms, she is not responding to CBT. So, what could be the answer? Uh, S N R I. The patient is taking tamoxifen. Patient is taking tamoxifen. Clonidine, better for us. Clonidine, yes. So, uh, clonidine, clonidine is the answer. Now, why uh, tamoxifen and anti uh, uh, antidepressants are not taken together? So, this is the answer. Antidepressant may interfere with tamoxifen effectiveness. SSRI antidepressant, particularly paroxetine, are powerful inhibitor of uh, enzyme P450 that. metabolizes tamoxifen in its active active form so because of that if your patient in your question uh, is on tamoxifen 
para, uh, uh, and she has a history of breast cancer paroxetin will never come in the answer is it clear is it clear yes yes sir okay now i'll i'll, I'll be uh, doing some related talks about this topic so this is a important talk i have added few tables only so some t this is a table that helps in selection of the your answer what type of hrt to be given so though you already know everything it could be just a small sum up so perimenopausal women we give cyclical or sequential hysterectomy patient we give ert only uh, if the patient has subtotal hysterectomy then if endometrium is not identified in the histopathology section that means everything has been removed then estrogen otherwise estrogen progesterone if endometrial ablation usually either cyclical or as, uh, combined continuous because if the ablation is done maybe small part of endometrium is left so progesterone has to be added if your patient sometime in the question they will say she is progesterone sensitive she is not able to take oral progesterone answer you can change to marina or even micronized oral progesterone that i already told that mac um, oral micronized progesterone is better tolerated if your woman has early menopause maybe higher dose of estrogen is required if the patient has malabsorption or something then transdermal route if the patient postmenopausal one year postmenopausal low libido something is there in the question then tibilon could be the answer okay tibilon could be the answer so these are the few things it's important talk that help in some finding out you know keywords for the type of hrt now these are the indication whether transdermal use is recommended migraine diabetes controlled hypertension established gallbladder disease uh, obesity smoking dvt previous and varicose veins so these are the indications for transdermal use of hrt so sometime in the questions you will find some of them opt for transdermal then this is the flow chart that helps to decide what type of hrt is given you, that is very, very good chart but you know uh, i have put the summary if in the summary point that help to decide a chart perimenopausal women uh, still having periods opt for cyclical hrt or sequential postmenopausal women one year complete postmenopause go for a, a cct continuous combined hrt or tibilon if your patient in the question has hysterectomy done go for ert in if you deal with a in your question if the patient has poi hrt and coc both could be the options that depends upon our fertility question so this is the these are the few sum up that will help in you know answering your questions apart from this this uh, contraception how long you will give contraception if your patient is less than 50 years old two years you have to give contraception because hrt does not provide any contraception and if your patient is more than 50 years of age in the question then till one year contraception has to be given if you find in your question low libido or lack of libido then look for the testosterone or tibilon in the answer if your patient question uh, if your patient under discussion has a bmi of 30 please go for transdermal these are the few summary point that usually help will help you in finding out your answers now few update from the vaginal estrogen deficiency talk so i have put some questions also so what is the most common symptoms of vaginal estrogen deficiency this is the this question is also from in the strategy of this talk also so what could be the most common symptom of vaginal estrogen deficiency or dryness yes so dryness is present in 75% dyspareunia 40 and uh, all other symptoms are also present but dryness present in 75% okay this uh, what is a recurrent uti in postmenopausal women number question but i'll tell you it is 20% 
okay this is also from the strategy question 46 years old woman present with the complaints of vaginal dryness and painful intercourse she is still having periods and using condom for contraception now she wanted to use a lubricant what kind of lubricant is not suitable oil based not suitable yes oil based are not suitable uh, because they can break condoms therefore they could interfere with the std or unplanned pregnancy so oil based cannot be used now vaginal lasers are also used as a treatment for vaginal atrophy what is the mode of action of vaginal laser any guess no guess okay so vaginal laser usually this is from the tog only these are the possible question that can come uh like uh, vaginal laser stimulate cellular pr uh, proliferation and also viability of vaginal epithelium so this is a mode of action of the vaginal laser usually they are using for the vaginal atrophy carbon dioxide laser and erbium laser now this is also from the talk only so uh, which is uh, uh, estrogen receptor modulator uh can be used for the treatment of vaginal dyspareunia any guess no guess so uh like uh, selective estrogen receptor modulator uh ospemifene Ospemifene is licensed for dyspareunia. Okay, this is from the talk table, and that was a catchy thing, so I put it here. And this is a summary for the different treatment for vaginal atrophy. So, like few things you should know. So, vagin moisturizing lubricant can be used anywhere. Vaginal estrogen, like, has to be cautioned when if the contraindication for the estrogen is there. apart from this click systemic hrt phytoestrogens laser treatment uh, 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 click selective estrogen receptor modulator androgen dha so all these are can be used for vaginal atrophy as a in the vaginal atrophy treatment so uh, important point i have marked like uh, laser treatment where it is can be used when the patient estrogen you cannot use so use laser as a treatment how it works that i have already told uh, estrogen receptor modulator is as a, this i also put in the question so ospemifene is licensed for dyspareunia maybe question can come from here apart from this oral treatment can also be given so oral treatment is androgen and dha and uh, so like few things i have put about the androgen and dha also so what they say about dha so precursor uh, dha is precursor steroid for uh, biosynthetic steroid it is a precursor okay so recently oral and vaginal preparation of dha can be given to improve uh, symptoms of vulvo vaginal atrophy and what is the uh, like uh, preparation given it is 6.5 mg perastron even it can be given intra vaginally also it is licensed in usa so this was given in vulvo vaginal atrophy tog so like few details because of that i have put it here any question with this vulvo vaginal uh, atrophy tog any question no so another tog the, uh, that is related to the topic is the unscheduled bleeding and the patient is on hrt okay so the first i would like to ask some questions so uh, this is also there in strategy so which is the first hormone to decrease and last hormone first hormone to increase and last hormone to decrease in aging process number 2 very good 
so estrogen will first to increase and estradiol last to decrease this is also from strategic question transition period up to the menopause is characterized by the irregular menstrual period so what will be the pattern read and answer Number uh, two, doctor. Number two. two. You said the period becomes lighter with increasing interval. Yes. Yeah. It's a transition period. Yeah. Yeah. For some some of the women, occasionally it becomes heavy also. This is the answer. Progressively lighter. Or Okay, with increasing interval in the periods this question i think had come in the exam once and this is a strategic question so you should know so during transition periods period progressively become lighter or occasionally heavier with increased interval of period in between them okay okay this is common question everybody knows hot flush occur in Seventy-eight. Okay, which is not of of the following is a relative contraindication for uh, HRT. In diabetes. Very good. Yes. So. Uh, the uh, these are the relative contraindication relative contraindication okay for the for hrt and if the uh, if the patient has got any of these the patient would require specialist advice so these are cardiac disease existing liver disease sle previous breast cancer previous ovarian endometrial cancer undiagnosed bleeding and vte okay so this is not too much to be read now this uh, this is from the tog okay so if the patient is on sequential ble uh, hrt and she is having heavy bleeding and it lasts more than 2 months then uh, next will be uh, like a uh, uh, patient uh, uh, tvs is done if they find et less than 7 then observation if they find et more than 7 then patient to be asked to come for hysteroscopy and biopsy so this is the flow chart that will you help in answering the question from the top if the patient is having is on sequential hrt what you will do i'm repeating it again if your patient is taking sequential hrt and heavy bleeding occur for 2 months then you will arrange tvs et less than 7 nothing to be done et more than 7 hysteroscopy now this is another flow chart now the patient if the patient is on cct and bleeding occur for more than 6 month uh, then tvs is done if it is less than 5 then it, it is labeled as atrophic at and if it is more than 5 then eb hysteroscopy has to be done so the, i try to simplify is the um, flow chart and you can get any question so you uh, click you should know this apart from this um this here there is a like uh, difference in the nice and also in the talk nice says if the patient comes with the like bleeding trouble after 3 months then the patient to be investigated but talk says if the bleeding is more than 6 month then the patient to be investigated okay so this is difference but now again the question will come from what to answer so read your question well and uh, but uh, like uh, but in my opinion if i have to answer i will answer from the nice only but this is the up update from the talk so i have put it here so this is the management how you will do this the, the change of the bleeding uh, manage the heavy bleeding if the patient is on 
लाइक सी सी टी और कंटिन्यूस कंबाइंड एच आर टी इफ द इफ लाइक दे हैव लेबल्ड इफ लेस देन फाइव देन अ ट्रॉफिक ई टी सो वॉट दे से इफ द लेस देन फाइव इज देयर देन रिस्क ऑफ इंडोमेटेरियल कैंसर यूजली डिक्रीजिज बाई नाइन्टी परसेंट रिगार्डलेस ऑफ द हारमोन यूज सो दिस इज अबाउट द ई टी दे आर से now uh, like another question from the same talk how much uh, folic uh, focal lesion as endometrial poly will be missed by people so answer is 20% now this is the criteria for the his uh, for the hysteroscopy if the patient is on a chart so if multiple bleeding episodes if focal lesion on ultrasound if the uh, et is more than 5 patient on cct and if the et is more than 7 then if the uh, and the patient is on sequential apart from this if uh, like ultrasound scan they are not able to see the endometrial echo clearly or if the patient belongs to high risk group such as patient has endometrial can disease history high bmi family history of non polypoiesis uh, colorectal cancer that means you are uh, suspecting endometrial pathology then these are the criteria for uh, uh, criteria uh, for the patient to be sent for hysteroscopy and if the patient is on hrt okay now what kind of treatment to be uh, so this is the if you find any trouble you are sending the patient for hysteroscopy what 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 to be done if the patient is on hrt and patient has bleeding so usually what they want either increase the dose change uh, increase the dose of e progesterone a change the dose of progesterone route of progesterone or reduce the dose of estrogen so whenever there is a bleeding usually these they are doing but there is one pr- uh, indication like if there has been pre uh, meno uh, pre uh, 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 like uh, pre menstrual spotting if they have pre menstrual spotting that is because of the uh, endometrial estromal formation is inadequate then high dose of estrogen is required so use in all other case this is the only one indication in pre menstrual spotting they are increasing the dose of estrogen rest every problem of bleeding that occurs with the uh, on the hormone replacement therapy they are either increase in, increase in the dose of his uh, progesterone or type of progesterone or reduce uh, uh, estrogen so that would be the answer now if the patient is on cct and the bleeding occurs what to be done increase or change the dose of progesterone reduce the estrogen or like change it to the uh, sequential hrt okay so this would be the options if your patient is on a cct and the patient is bleeding and you have done investigation and there had been no problem so either increase the dose of progesterone decrease estrogen or change the type of hrt that means convert it to the sequential one is it clear any question now other, if the bleeding on hrt other options either uh, stop hrt non oral hrt offer marina coil okay or offer surgery this is the last topic and this is from the last uh, recent talk and this talk is the last october talk only that come recently quite complicated topic androgen in post menopausal women i try to simplify it so these are the like usually these are the question is also asked what are the androgen sources in the women so usually like adrenal gland is there so da and if it is dhes it it comes directly from the adrenal gland rest all other types like dhea 
androstenedion uh, and testosterone it comes both from adrenal gland and uh, ovary okay so most important part is that that uh, uh, testosterone 25 percent produced by ovary and 25 percent by adrenal gland so after this testosterone either it will be converted to estrogen or estradiol or it will act on the testosterone receptor uh, the after like uh, um, uh, when the action of uh, enzyme is there so this is the general physiology but two things it has to be remembered this percentage maybe the question can come Adren the testosterone 25 percent from adrenal gland and 25 percent from ovary okay so another question good question androgen increase sexual desire in the females so what could be the mode anyone can answer and any or any like any of the okay so any any guess how the androgen increase desire increase the dopamine yes so increasing so androgen sexual desire in the female by increasing dopamine okay so the, just in sum up so androgen are the like sex hormones the usually male sex hormone and women actually produces three to four times of times as much as estrogen testosterone as estrogen per day okay so this can come in the question apart from this androgen in the woman so like testosterone contribute to libido sexual arousal orgasm by acting on the central nervous system by increasing dopamine levels okay this is one thing that you already know now so how it happens in the woman so it usually seen first in the girl six to eight years of age then uh, its level start decline and usually declined level is there till 65 years of age after what will happen in the postmenopausal woman there would be fall in the uh, ear testosterone that will cause female sexual dysfunction okay now you have to remember this definition maybe can come fsd is defined as problem with the sexual response desire orgasm pain that causes personal distress so this is a definition of fsd maybe asked in the exam and it usually occurs in 32 percent of the women in 40 to 65 years of age nearing like postmenopausal women so it occurs in 32 5 32 another important question part is that these symptoms to be there present more than six months and at least 75 percent of the sexual experiences so this much is like important to know so what will be the treatment for fsd so first will be the counseling okay so first will be the counseling and second will be the transdermal testosterone okay usually oral testosterone is not recommended why because it increases uh, uh, ldl cholesterol in the body because of that usually the like uh, oral testosterone is not done now we have read the nice guideline nice guideline says first we have uh, if the patient has got problem with their desire or libido whatever first they give hrt then they if it is not improving then they switch on or add testosterone but according to this updated talk they say testosterone can be offered without giving hrt to the woman okay so this is a little change and update here now these are the testosterone preparations available in uk and in the form of gels and creams no need to remember but in the part three exam the patient asked about the testosterone preparation so at least one name you can remember so previously i searched on the internet for the answer now it, it has come in the top so you can remember one name part three people that because it was asked by the role player in the exam so these are the preparations available now these are also a few things about the testosterone application that is important so the gel and cream to be applied on the clean dry skin on lower abdomen and upper thigh usually it is rubbed it requires minimum eight weeks for its symptom to manifest 
then the treatment can be done for three months. The patient to be reviewed after six months. If her symptoms are not changing, then no use continuing it. So after six months, it has to be changed. And uh, like uh, uh, um, it can be used for six to 12 months, but uh, uh, like uh, uh, efficacy and safety for long term interval is not clear. So this is also important because this was asked in the exam. Now, if the androgens are used, so there could be certain side effects. So hirsutism, so it is like you can, in the exam it can be asked what is the most common side effect. So answer will come as hirsutism because it is 3 to 20%. Second will be acne, okay, hirsutism and acne. Others are, you already know, alopecia, virilism. Uh, so this could be the side effects. These are androgenic. Now coming to the breast, so if the what they say, if the testosterone is given, so usually it is not increase in the risk of breast cancer. As there is increased risk with the HRT, that we already know, we just read that there will be three cases per thousand women extra when the HRT is used, but that situation is not there with the testosterone. Apart from this, like uh, there is no increased risk of endometrial cancer when the testosterone is given endometrial safety cardiovascular safety there is no increased risk of stroke thrombosis with the testosterone therapy so but the less data is available so this is all about the safety of a clake androgen few things of updates are there like what do have the strong evidence so testosterone has beneficial effect on the sexual functions so number of satisfying sexual events per month, increased desire, arousal, or orgasmic function, and reduction in sexual concern, distress. So this is the like beneficial effect of testosterone. This way the woman will be affected or like beneficial. But the increase side effect of acne and hair growth that we have already learned that acne hirsutism is the most common side effect. Now, oral therapy we are not giving because it causes increase in LDL level that we already know. So these do have the strong evidence, limited evidence, like if patient has to be reviewed for six months. If the patient has got no, no improvement in the symptoms, so it has to be stopped after six months. So this could be asked in your exams. Apart from this, testosterone has got no effect on cognition, musculoskeletal, symptoms or dvt so uh, like no no relation is there so evidences are not there and safety data to use for longer interval is also not appear not available so that's all i had to say about new talk that came in recent like uh, october talk only androgen in the postmenopausal women so that's all i had to say anyone thanks for joining any one of you have got any question can ask me very important topic for part two three mrcog and ebcog one and two also so any question any question anyone no thank you it's clear okay Okay, so if there are no questions, then I would be closing. Welcome. Have a good day.